Markets down today, nothing too dramatic, but still, you know, down 1% on the Russell, down half a percent elsewhere. The banks were down quite a bit, though, and that is that's not what it looked like yesterday, you know, at the close. So the, the, I think the banks looked okay. The markets looked weaker than the banks relative. But anyway, everything was red today. We'll take a look at everything in a bit more detail. Uh, interesting, the dollar rebounded a bit i still think it looks a bit toppy so maybe just under 105 we're going to get resistance obviously we'll take a look rates continued lower that i thought was gonna take place anyway also the european markets came down to significant levels down about one and a half percent you can see here and they're not looking as strong as they used to so um anyway let's take a look at everything Chronologically, so starting with the S&P, you know, okay, down half a percent, but really having a bit of a doji here at support slash resistance. So not the weakest looking candle, but, you know, we're going to look at some of the other markets and that could drag down the S&P. The NASDAQ, same sort of candle at the same sort of level. It's a trend line. So it's sort of saying, look, we may have found support, uh, you know, so that's what the doji is. It's sort of possible reversal it's kind of a you know a candle which suggests it can go either way but when you've come down and entering support it suggests maybe we're due for a bounce i don't believe in the bounce though because i think nvidia has held the, <clears throat> the market up on its own and i think nvidia is way too overextended so you know i'm obviously short that and i was happy to be short today i think it's down five five and a half percent at the close um, so yeah, the S&P and the NASDAQ, they've obviously been the strongest ones, but, uh, despite their doji candles, I don't believe them. Let's look at the Dow. The Dow's not the strongest. It is in a descending, uh, what, what I would call a bull flag, let's say, um, but still a bull flag, but not coming out of a very strong move. I mean, this looks okay, but compared to the other markets, it's not. And although we rallied off our lows, it doesn't look that bad. It was, you know, technically speaking, the the market that was down the least. I just think that, you know, one or two more down days and this thing is looking just as bad as, as the worst one. So I don't believe in, in the Dow. And I think, you know, imagine we have a drop in NVIDIA, just one stock NVIDIA, for example, tomorrow, uh, for example, that could just take everything down just on its own. So, Yeah. I respect the Dow's attempt to look okay here, but I just don't buy it. The Russell, probably the weakest looking chart. Actually, it is, you know, okay, it bounced off a little mini support here, bounced off its lows, but again, one or two down days, maybe just tomorrow, you know, you close below 172 and we're going straight back down to this low here of sort of 169. So for me, the markets don't look good which is good because I don't think they're good fundamentally. So the technicals are starting to align a bit more. So that's the markets. I would say a little bit bearish if I had to choose. If we look at the banks, so the XLF, again, that looks a bit more like the Russell, you know, pretty similar stuff. Uh, look at this, you know, I did think that the XLF was weaker than the others. Didn't go down as much, but look, the chart looks pretty weak here. So tomorrow, okay, rallied off its lows, but like the Russell, it really is very similar to the Russell. But um, you know, one more down there, and we're touching this this support down here. If we close below, you know, thirty one twenty, let's say we're going straight back down. So for me, the XLF looks weak, looks very weak actually. Uh, that is not a bullish looking pattern at all so any more continuation on the downside this thing is flushing and going towards its bear market lows within days the kbe looked okay yesterday little candle sort of hitting its head over N not yet but it was looking like it wanted to hit its head and therefore maybe pierce its head and close above this descending suggesting a nice rally i love these types of charts but we're dealing with small regional banks with huge fundamental issues. Rates are going up. They've got massive losses. You know, people withdrawing deposits. Why bother? It's safe in the big banks. So KB and KRE, just totally identical charts at this point. Uh, the KRE used to be weaker. Now they're sort of the same. But look, you know, that candle alone, it's, it's, it's not an absolute nail in the coffin candle. But for me, 
a down day tomorrow and we're going all the way back down to 36 on the KRE. Maybe not in one day, but KBE, you know, all the way down, back down to 32. And we're talking about piercing the bear market lows. And if you zoom out of something like KRE, you can see how significant it is. You know, we bounced off visible support. If we start to flush, and I think we're maybe one, one and a half, two weeks away from doing this, but things are, are moving quickly. So, you know, next week we could have a close below 34 and then we're straight back down to the Corona lows, you know? I, I know some stocks have taken out their Corona lows, but we're, we're talking about the banking, the small and regional banks of America, it's like 70% of loans, small business loans or something like that come through them. So it's pretty significant stuff. So watch out whilst everyone's partying in the NASDAQ, and probably about to get smashed in the face. Let's be honest. Nvidia's valuations are absurd, and uh, news travels quickly. So, you know, if Nvidia has a bit of a pullback, which I think it will have, maybe not the the mightiest of pullbacks, but that alone could act as a catalyst for a big drop. And watch out for the banks. For me, it remains the most important thing: the banks and interest rates. Those two things. And uh, I just felt like today we had a bit of a gold move up. Okay, I know we had news out and all this stuff, but I could just feel like market down, gold up, that was starting to return. So that could help gold, you know, a big smash in the banks, uh, which is what propelled gold really high. Anyway, that's the markets and the banks. Let's move to interest rates. So from the banks to interest rates. Yeah, so well, I've got to remove my, my annotations from this morning's video. But yeah, this is what I think. I think we're going to go lower. Maybe a bit more. Don't know how much more. I think rates are going higher, basically. You know, I think the, the Fed's going to raise rates more than people think. I've thought that consistently. You know, everyone talking about cuts. Nah, no cuts. And you know what? A pause isn't a cut. A pause isn't, oh, let's, let's party. A pause can last a long time. I think they're serious about trying to, you know, get on top of inflation. I think they'll fail spectacularly, but they have to try. <laughs> They can't just say, okay, let's uh, let's go for high inflation and hyperinflation. Forget about it. They're definitely trying. So I think one, two, three more cuts, something like that is in place. Um, so for that reason, I think short-term rates especially, but all rates, all yields will, will move higher. Although that said, look, we've had a nice move up, little retracement, and then a move back up. So for the one year, I don't know if it's going to come all the way back down to, to this resistance, see if it's support, maybe it'll curl before it probably will maybe tomorrow it starts red and ends on green and then we've got a nice hammer and we go up straight away it could definitely happen so a small retracement i don't know how much in the in the shorter yield um uh, two year also you know maybe another down day but maybe the bottom was already in we start to move back up five year looks identical to the two year just come down a bit more relatively speaking 10 year pretty much the same as the five so you know they've had a bit of a drop i think the 30 year might indicate how low we might go because this ascending i i trust so i don't think we've got that much more to go and if the 30 year doesn't have that much more to go i can't imagine the 10 5 2 or 1 do so i expect rates either tomorrow or monday to start having green days and making like the one year making new highs so watch out also European yields, look at this ascending line. I mean, yeah, you can say it it closed below it, but I just I just feel like maybe my chart is just one millimeter off and now it's at very strong support. I just feel like yields are going to go up. They've had a bit of a drop. They may have one or two more days, but they're going to go back up. And when they go back up, I think this time you're not going to have the NASDAQ, NVIDIA and all this stuff. Uh, oh, AI is going to save the day. No, it's not. You know, that's that's probably years away. Uh, if it even has, even you know, even if it has such a such a significant impact, which, which it probably does. You know, three D printing, AI, all of this could totally uh, replace the need for human manufacturing in, in China and all that. I, I love all technological stuff. It's just charts are something else. The economy is something else. There's a lag. There's um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But the point is, I reckon yields are going to go up. And it will end this little party we've had. I, I don't think that we're in a bull market at all. You know, let's just zoom out a little bit. Wave one, down. Wave two, little complacency, uh, consolidation. And then, bam, we're going to close below this ascending. Maybe not immediately. And then down we go to wave three, new lows. That's what I think is going to come. 
All right, let's look at the dollar. Dollar. So this was interesting. Nice move up. But look at that. A lot of resistance. I know the day is um just over pretty much. But I think that looks like a bit of a blow off top. I mean, though, for me, 105. Look at this other ascending line I, I found. Um, You know, I thought we'd get to 105. I did change one or two lines here. I'm not going to lie because there were too many. So I cleaned it up. I just feel like maybe we're not going to get to 105. And, you know, I think long term, the dollar goes to new lows. Um, and for that to happen, what would be perfect is that we make a lower high here. And for it to make a lower high, okay, we could test 105 and that's the lower high, but it would be even better if we fail 105. So high 104s, what it's just done here, that would be perfect, actually. Because I don't really want gold to go much lower. I'm prepared for it, but I have to admit, I'm not positioned as well as I could have been. So I would prefer if uh, we do roll over the dollar. And look, we've got like four or five candles here hovering. We haven't had that since we started this march up. It's not the biggest march up, but I just feel like those are the three red candles. Okay, this one's not really the reddest of candles. It's basically unchanged, but you know, you've got three, four, five candles where price hasn't moved too much. And then today we've got this pretty strong resistance does look like a reversal candle. So maybe we come back down. Do we just bounce at 103.5 and go higher? I don't think so. Maybe we come all the way back down to sort of 102-ish. And if we do, then it's going to start to look bearish. Okay, it'll find some support. But I would love to see it just pierce below 101, 100.8 and see all the triggered stops, see what happens. Obviously, it's not obvious. Um, obviously, it's not obvious. I don't know. That just looks like it's finding a lot of resistance. So tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of a, a red candle. And you know what? For those who want, for those who are bearish, the dollar, I reckon a close below 103 point, let's say eight. You know, that would really, that would, um, that would encourage them, I guess, to, to, to see the DXY go much lower. So let's see what happens. I must admit the resistance is pretty strong around here. So I would tend to be a little bit more bearish at this point. All right, that's the dollar. Obviously, that would impact commodities because the dollar has had pretty significant impact on commodities. Copper today, a little red. I mean, look, we flushed, we lost ascending, we bounced off this horizontal. We've retested prior support. It's acted as resistance. I don't know what happens now. What's supposed to happen now is a double bottom attempt and then move up. If the dollar is going to go down, then we should get a little higher low candle here, like double bottom higher low. So tomorrow should form a nice reversal candle to start to move back up. Otherwise, if it doesn't move back up and the dollar's going down, well, copper probably wants to go lower. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I think tomorrow is pretty important for copper. Natural gas, you know, during the day, I thought, ah, oh, here we go. It was really looking strong, like up to 3% or something. And I don't know what news came out, some weather-related news or whatever it was, but look at that. Now that looks horrible. Closed at low of day, lower than yesterday's low of day. It's very rare for, for me to see this type of pattern where already this pattern was a bit weird, you know, dragging along the sea floor and then pumping up. But after you have a pump where we've taken out the last sort of choppy area to come all the way back down, very rare. So I would I expect strong support around here to be honest where it is maybe 2.23 ish should be strong support and below that very strong support it'd be extremely bizarre to see it just keep going down and close below 2.1 so um still bullish natural gas but I have to be I'm pretty shocked at the um at the pattern of today especially already I think it was oversold but then today. But I love it because I'm in two out of five tranches, so I don't care. I'm very patient. If we go lower, good. If we go higher, good. So I really don't mind. I'm not emotionally attached to any um particular uh, direction, actually. Oil. Now, this one I did think was going to go lower. It did go lower. And to be honest, it's not looking great, is it? It's, uh, you know, if we retest this 64, let's say, it's not going to look good. 
like triple bottom stop they really hold and actually we've tested it several times which makes this line all the more credible so a close below 64 would be horrible i know opec are meeting now and they've banned the western journalists fair enough to be honest one two three four five this would be the sixth attempt it'd be very violent if we close below 64 like I'd expect some shorts to pile on, some stops to be triggered, some momentum, people to jump in, and then just flush this thing probably below 60. And then we should see some strong buying. I love that. So um, I'd love that to happen. And then that could provide the, the perfect reversal candle. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, that probably would happen, actually. I think fundamentally, long term, geopolitically, uh, looking at the dollar from every angle, oil, unless they come out with not even some new technology, but you've got to implement it. It takes a while. I feel like oil is going to be here for a while, and I feel like it should be triple digits this year, definitely next year. So, you know, you can get 100% in a strong commodity, possibly, if we get a flush. So, yeah, I'll be looking at oil, looking forward to that, and this is pretty exciting what's happening here. Uranium. Now... Uranium is one that I really want to get into. I was happy it flushed. Pretty surprised we came all the way back down. Massive reversal candle. Don't know if there was any news, although I did check the URNM ETF, which is for the uranium stocks. And then I noticed, ah, it's much lower than uranium. So maybe, maybe that was the reason for the big reversal because it was a last stand, sort of you shall not pass strong reversal. So it looks like the miners, the uranium miners, led the uranium market price in this case. But look at this, exactly the same chart. It's just here we were hitting already the very strong strategic support. So, you know, if you have your URNM, this ETF here, closing below 28, definitely 28, like it's, it's pretty toast, you know. So maybe that's the reason why uranium rallied pretty strong because the actual miners did. And I think they deserve to be much higher. So, yeah. But anyway, that was just something I, I noticed. I forgot to look at that ETF. But let's see. Now, well, this is no longer relevant. Now I'm not sure what to expect at all. I'll just let the chart do its thing. But look how close we are to either, you know, breaking out. Let's say for me, a breakout really would be a close above 21 at this rate. But what you really want to see is a close above this descending or a breakdown close below this is ascending so not long i mean yeah it could take two or three months but i i really don't think it's going to stay this in this narrow price range for that long so especially if the market starts to drop maybe uranium will go down with it gold and silver continuation of the bounce of this ascending support for gold that was very nice to see we did lose a lot of ground off the news and that was really the dollar it's just really the dollar um but look the dollar came off a lot too from its highs so you'd expect gold to have gone a bit better uh, but for me you know 1980 75 this choppy area is kind of resistance but i still would have expected gold to, to have closed a bit higher who knows let's see what happens tomorrow of course we could resume the move up so i think tomorrow's gonna be very important Really, really important just for commodities, the dollar, and, and also the markets for quite a few sectors. Uh, well, to be honest, every day is important. But I look forward to seeing gold's candle tomorrow. Silver, and that did not lose much of its profit. And you can see it made up for its lag, its lag or lacking uh, of following gold. So that was, that was nice to see silver go up. Not sure if there's a bit of a descending move. Maybe. But I think really what you want is silver to attack 24, and that should equal gold at 1980. So that'd be nice to see. It'd be nice to see those two sort of pairing up around those ranges. On the downside, of course, you want to see if you want to see gold go lower. I think a close below 1930 would do it, or at least below this low of day, yesterday's low of day, and silver obviously below this 22.7. I don't see that happening because I'd see the dollar reversing. So let's look at the miners. The miners did better than the metals, which you could not say has been the case recently. So that was a nice to see a nice bounce. 
Okay, close a little off its highs, but so do the metals. For me, it looks good. It looks good. Let's see if we can rally a bit higher. Let's say 32 for GDX. Again, we need gold at 1980, silver at 24 for that probably. GDXJ also did well. Started to reverse just off its ascending support, just a bit above. I noticed that, you know, you zoom out, it looks like it did its thing. So you don't want to be too precise and say, no, it's got to be 35.51 or something. No, this is generally a bounce zone. So it's good to zoom out sometimes. I think it's a good day for the miners. So let's just see if we can keep it up. But for that, you probably need gold and silver up. And for that, you probably need the dollar to actually go down. I think if the dollar starts to reverse, if it has one bad day, that will really propel gold and silver. They've been waiting for that sign. Even if it just starts to stay, even if the dollar stabilizes and goes back up two days later, I think one bad day will, will equal a very good day for commodities, especially gold, silver, and equities. Uh, and, you know, let's see what rates do, because that obviously has an effect. And let's look what the banks do, because I think the banks are starting to impact gold too. And if they're not doing it yet, they probably will. You know, think about what happened the last two, three, four weeks where banks were crashing and the number one go-to area, it wasn't even the VIX, it wasn't Bitcoin. It was Bitcoin for one or two days, but throughout the period, it was gold and silver. That's why we moved up so much. I don't think it was the debt ceiling or... Um, I mean, it was also the dollar going down, no doubt, but it's really the dollar and the banks. That's what impacts gold for me the most. Everyone knew they're going to pass the debt ceiling. They're going to do it, obviously. Uh, you know, lastly, Bitcoin, because Bitcoin, I, I've ignored because, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on in commodities, and that's my focus. But I drew this descending line a while ago, and actually what's happened in Bitcoin is we bounced off this low, and we just tagged almost this descending. And I didn't even notice, but it's just perfect how the charts work sometimes. It's really nice to go back to a chart you haven't seen in a while and just see it's it's worked out fabulously. So I think if you are interested in Bitcoin, you've only got to look at these two lines. This support here, 25,000, let's say 800, whatever the lows be on these two occasions. And then this descending line, you'd want to see a close above it, and then you can get interested. Otherwise, it's resistance. So, uh, but Bitcoin's been pretty weak. Look, you know, you've got the dollar sort of losing its strength. You've got gold and silver up finally, but Bitcoin not. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, if banks go down, how does Bitcoin react? If the Nasdaq goes down, because sometimes the big the Bitcoin, sometimes Bitcoin is is totally in line with with the Nasdaq, you know. So if Nvidia starts to flush tomorrow and the Nasdaq goes down, obviously does Bitcoin go down, or is it paying attention to the banks, or is it the dollar, or is it just doing its own thing? But anyway, the chart will, will will reflect whatever it does. So we can count on that more than anything. All right, that'll do. Good luck. See you tomorrow.